Alright guys, so I'm going to be doing a review of Fortnite Marvel Universe Zero War. I don't really talk a lot about Fortnite, mostly because I'm still trying to figure it out. And trust me, this is that's going to be a pro that's going to be a bit problematic in this book. Um, mostly because I was like, eh, I did do the Fortnite Batman crossover, and I did talk about characters I'd like to see in Fortnite. Two of which have now gotten in. <laughs> well, yeah, two of which have gotten in: My Hero and Doom Slay and Doom. Literally, I talked about those of characters I'd like to see in in um, in Doom. I mean, excuse me, in Fortnite, and they're both and they both got in. Still waiting for Power Rangers. Still waiting for Power Rangers. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so here we go. So let's talk about Z um, Marvel Fortnite Zero War. So Zero War, Jesus Christ. If This is going to be very problematic if you're trying to read this book as either a Marvel fan or a Fortnite fan. Let me explain. So the comic basically takes place during, I guess, after the events of chapter one of season one in Fortnite, and basically Spider-Man has returned from the island and basically is like, hey, we need to end this war, it's going to end all reality, so I'll go get some help for my friends in the Marvel Universe. Um, so he brings back other Marvel superheroes to help with these characters. And you may be thinking, well, this is going to, like, obviously if you don't know your Fortnite lore, you're going to have some problems. Which, with me, that's the same thing with me. Now, the Batman one, I give a little more credit, because the Batman one really just uses... It's more of a Batman story, where Batman is on this world. And you may be thinking, well, you always go on... Well, Multi, you always go on about how crossovers should give equal love to both franchises. That's true, but I feel like Fortnite is a little... Is very expansive and like overtly law is very large and hard and even like i think some of the di only diehard lord people are into it that's why i was like the batman one was a lot easier because the fortnite was the for the world of fortnite was used as a backdrop for this story that and batman trapped in this world along with catwoman deathstroke and harley um here it's like you have to know your homework and god help you if you're a fortnite fan too because they they do some deep cuts Marvel-wise. Now, this is done by Christos Gage, who is a writer I always enjoy. He also did the Batman Fortnite book. Um, the The main story focuses on uh, found the Foundation and Agent Jones working with Wolverine, Suri, and Spider-Man in order to find the Zero Fragment, which they do bring up the whole Nexus War thing, which was apparently Galactus showed up there. And they even bring up, hey, Wolverine, you went to this island too. So they're trying to keep in continuity with that. But going back to what I said, yeah, good luck if you are a Marvel, if you are a Fortnite fan trying to figure this out, because there are some deep cuts here that you will not understand. Because they even bring up Doom War. Doom War literally happened in like what, 2009, 11? Yeah, that, and I love that event. Don't get me wrong, I really do love Doom War. But yeah, they also bring up the fact that Surrey can turn into birds now, which is a thing even I forgot. And they also have Stegron the Dinosaur Man and the High Evolutionary as side villains. Yeah. Now you see why I brought up the Stegron video, right? Now it's starting to make sense, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. The story is pretty simple, and for five issues, it's actually well-paced. Um, reality's about to fall apart and the Marvel Universe and the Fortnite characters all team up to fight them. But when I say Fortnite characters, I mean the Marvel characters, I really only mean like a few people. Because if you're thinking, like, oh boy, it's like a, it, it's like um, we're going to have all the Avengers here, and they do show up. Captain America, Captain Mar you know, Carol, Captain Marvel, um, Iron Man. But they just get dropped in the background. Like, literally, I don't think Gage knew what to do with, like, Carol and Steve and a few others. Because really, the only ones they focus on is Spider-Man, Wolverine, Surrey. Um, those are the main focuses. And then you have um, Iron Man, who's doing his thing with with the uh, the with um, the scientist and the and the paragri paradigm group, which I have no idea. I apologize if I'm messing this up to all the Fortnite fans. And you also they briefly mention Storm and Thor, who are vital to get to the giant mech. If you guys have played Fortnite long enough, you've probably seen that giant cat mech who fought a kaiju monster. Even I'm saying this, and I'm like, I don't under... I'm literally like Stan Pines in the episode where he's like trying to talk to Ford. He's like, look, I've been around the world. I've seen a lot of weird stuff. And then see the portal. There's nothing about this that I understand. 
That's literally me reading this book. I can understand all the Marvel stuff. Easy. But I looked at this in the perspective of a of a Fortnite of a guy who wanted Fort who wanted to who wanted to read Marvel stuff from a Fortnite perspective. Like, good luck trying to figure all this stuff out from here. Also, Gage is a really good Spider-Man writer. I think he's a criminally underrated. I think Christos Gage is a criminally underrated Spider-Man writer. But he kind of does something that I don't like in here, where he's they Spider-Man does have some good points, but everyone. Uh, sorry about that. Um. Anyway. So yeah, I'm trying to, like, if you're a Fortnite fan trying to read this and you're trying to understand, like, okay, this is in the current Marvel stuff, not in, yeah, but, uh, sorry, I, I went off rails. It feels like Christos Gage treats Spider-Man, like, kind of like a bad joke in here. And it's weird, too, because I've seen his other work with Spider-Man. I'm like, he's really good. And I kind of wish he got more stuff to do with Spider-Man. If you want, like, a perfect example of Gage's um, take on Spider-Man, go check out his... Spider-Man and X-Men miniseries, as well as Spider-Man Fantastic Four miniseries. Those are both really good. I really love both. Um, and it kind of makes me wish Gage got some some, some Spider-Man work. But here he's like, it's the kind of Spider-Man I hate, where he's like the butt of every joke, and he's making lame stupid jokes the whole time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I will say, though, the dude is either a fan or he knows his homework on Fortnite. I, and this has come from someone who knows two things about J Fortnite. Jack and shit. And Jack left town. <laughs> um, yeah. For five issues, though, I will say it's actually well-paced. And it actually focuses more on Wolverine than it does sp any of the other characters. Um... Yeah, it does focus on Wolverine, and also he's making out the foundation. Which, by the way, you think during sex he called her Jean by accident? I like, that's my headcanon, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, what did I think of this book? It's not bad, I will say I did like the Batman Fortnite book. Um, between the two, and I'm trying, it's not like I'm not trying to hate Fortnite, my girlfriend's really good at it. So, I'm trying, like... I'm trying to, under, like, understand more of it. I'm not trying to say, like, I'm, a, I'm trying to be a fan of Fortnite. I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to be the good boyfriend here and try to learn more about the shit. So, yeah. All in all, it's not bad if you're a Fortnite fan or a Marvel fan. I will say that you probably, you might get confused by all of this. Because they, like, bring up stuff that, like, if you're, if you don't know your Fortnite, then you're gonna be like, what the fuck is all this? If you're a Mar if you're a Fortnite person who doesn't know a lot of Marvel, there's going to be points where you're like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> That's kind of where we are in this. Um, yeah, it's a decent it's a decent book. I do think it's a decent book. Like I said, if you wanted to check out a cool crossover with Fortnite, um, I would suggest the Batman one more. That's just me though. I think the Batman one was a little more like well structured. Also, it has a Batman Snake Eyes fight. I can't go. You can't go wrong with that. I mean, like, automatically, you had Batman versus Snake Eyes. I, <laughs> this one doesn't have Batman fighting Snake Eyes. And in fact, it's not so... It's, it doesn't really feel like the Marvel characters are properly utilized outside of Spider-Man, Surrey, and Wolverine, and maybe some stuff with Iron Man. And that's really all the Marvel characters that are in here. But it is... I will say, though, that it is nice to see Marvel characters... be Like, Marvel characters in a crossover again. It is really nice to see that. And I'm really looking forward to the Ultraman Marvel crossover that's coming soon. So it's just kind of nice to see Marvel characters doing crossovers again. It's really nice. I really enjoy it. Um, hopefully that um, Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman um, mystery comic is is a Marvel DC crossover, which has been kind of teased for the past two years. So that that would be I think that would be really cool to see. Um, but like I said, I'm really excited now that Marvel's doing crossovers again, and it is going to be so awesome to see the uh, the, Mar the uh, Marvel Ultraman crossover coming soon. But yeah, you guys tell me in the comments below. If you've read Zero War, um, please let me know in the comments below. Hope you all enjoyed this. And uh, once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.